All right, guys, so I did this awesome trip last summer uh, to visit my grandparents in Portugal, specifically Azores, it's an archipelago in the middle of the Atlantic. And at first, I was just going to kind of be a homebody and stay with my grandparents and be cooked like great food. Um, and I did a few runs actually around the island, which were amazingly beautiful. The coastline is super awesome and rugged rock super sharp but then after a while I got a little bit um, antsy I guess so I decided to do a backpacking trip in a nearby uh, island called Fayol. I made up this route on all trails that goes over the middle of the island and hits the crater uh, in the center and then I stayed along the coast camping. The next day was just a trail running day and ran over to the volcanic activity on the tip of the island and then camped at the same spot. And the next day was super chill, just walking along the coastline while it was drizzling. The first day I hopped on a ferry, I think around like 8 a.m. and didn't get into the island until around like 10 a.m. And around 11 a.m. I had gotten some food from like a supermarket and started going. At the beginning, it was just kind of going through some like residential areas I actually stopped at a, at a garden, at like a, what would you call it, like a botanical garden and was there for a little while and had some like free tea, chilled tea, which was amazing and then kept going and at that point I started going up the crater which kind of lasted for a while. And there's this beautiful red dirt winding road that just goes all the way to the top and then just spectacular views down on the island. It's just crazy. You've been hiking, like climbing all day, and then suddenly you can see into the middle of the island. Yeah, this is pretty sick. Did some hacking, got on top of some random building. But it's a much better view up here, so. Tallest point of fail. And that's Piku over there. That was probably one of the most magical parts of the trip, actually. And then I just kind of like hiked around the outside of the crater at the top. I didn't go in because you need a permit for that. Um, and it started getting a little bit windy, so it got a little bit cold. Um, but was able to then hike down off the other side of the mountain. And at that point, it started getting getting a little bit drizzly really great like four mile section where you just follow this small canal like super small like a foot wide and there are a few like bridges that are super beautiful and then finally coming out of that I was getting pretty tired it had been a long day I was around like 16 or 17 miles I was just kind of tramping through some final forest Next comes one of the craziest parts of the trip I am just dead tired I've hiked like 20 miles and I go through this pitch dark cave and I come out and I'm in the middle of a caldera and it like reminded me of a Roman Colosseum. It was just so unexpected. And then I started hitting a town and I asked this one Spanish guy actually uh, how to get down to where I was trying to camp for the night, which is next to the beach. And he directed me to just go down the road. So I basically just walked down this road. I kind of made a horseshoe and then came back along the coast and was able to find a place to stay for the night. Got a quick coffee at a nearby cafe. Super like chill backpacking at that point and called it a night. The next day I was going to go to the volcanic area. And I took this cool picture where you can see the transition from red to dark dirt that marks the volcanic area. And this area is called the Capelinhos. I actually got there like right as the museum opened and was able to be like the first one in the museum, like actually be first person in the museum for the day, which is really cool. There's just so many cool parts of the museum. It actually goes into a little bit of the volcanic activity that happened in the 1950s and how that pushed people to immigrate from the Azores to other parts of the world, which I think mainly included the US, Canada, and I think Brazil at the time. Then I just stuck around the museum to see the volcanic area and then I started hiking back along the middle of the island and actually got to see some old whaling stations. I actually wrote a more comprehensive 
written summary of this whole trip and everything that I did and other things about how I felt and I'll link that down below and I have some uh, information about the history of whaling in the Azores there as well and got to see these amazing uh, caverns actually although I didn't explore them very much because I knew I was alone and I actually didn't have a flashlight with me because I hadn't expected to be in the dark uh, during the middle of the day then I made it to I started coming down off the ridge to get back to base camp and I like passed through some town which were like super cute and I saw this actually like really cute cat and I took a really cool I just I thought it was a pretty cool photo of a cat coming out of an entryway uh, like panoramic view that also included the road and it was a super chill day I finished early because I just had a backpack a small bag that whole day and I was, and I was able to mo run most of it uh, so then I just kind of took the rest of the day as a beach day and jumped in some of those swimming holes. The third day I actually hiked to this place, Castelo Branco. And then at night I get another coffee and get some fries and then I make friends with this random little dude and he just kind of comes over and he seems a little hungry. He starts eating some of my fries and he's like eating some ice cream and honestly it was a super fun time. Good to have some company. And the next day I knew I had to start early because it was a pretty long day of walking. I think at least like 15 miles. So I made sure to wake up early. It was raining. I kind of wanted to sit it out, but there was kind of no alternative. So I started walking. I made it all the way to Castelo Branco, uh, which means White Castle, and decided against going up. I mean, partially because it was dangerous and also partially because at that time, in the season, or I think maybe even just generally it's closed because of the flora and fauna on the island. So I just went to go see it and then kept walking along the coastline at that point. It was just mostly going through cities and such. And I actually had a really good time listening to voice memos of myself playing the guitar um, from like a few, from within the past few months. Uh, it's just something I've enjoyed picking up. Then I made it back to Orta, which is uh, the main city and by around like 2 p.m. or something like that. So I had plenty of time actually, so I kind of walked around. I had a gin and tonic, which was actually amazing. I kind of expected a gin and tonic to just be like mostly gin and like some lemon. I didn't know it had like soda water in it. And it was actually so refreshing because that day was also very hot after the rain subsided. And yeah, then I just called it a day, got on the ferry around like 6 p.m. and then made it back home. Uh, and then the rest of the trip was super chill. I still had like three or four days with my grandparents and my grandmother cooks amazing food. So I, I always enjoy that. It was nice going back to that after the backpacking. I love going back to the Azores. Um, it really kind of reminds me of my heritage and gets me to practice my Portuguese, which I really enjoy. And also gets me to spend time with my family especially my grandparents, um, which I really like to take advantage of um, while I can, basically. Yeah. I'm going to get a pin. Oh, it's a little bit of ease. We are the screwers. Me. Thank you guys for tuning in and listening to me talk about my trip in Portugal, the Azores, visiting my grandparents, and my backpacking trip in Fayal. Uh, please follow me or subscribe uh, here on YouTube. I'd really appreciate it. I have an Instagram. I also have a website if you want to check that out. Thanks. Have a good day.